Wow, was. Wow, was. Wow, was. Wow, was. Howdy partners, how are you all doing today? I'm Brian Sofia, and today I'm here to bring you a very early review of the very highly anticipated comedy A Million Ways to Die in the West, directed by Seth MacFarlane and starring him as well. It also stars Charlize Theron, Neil Patrick Harris, Amanda Seyfried, Giovanni Ribisi, Sarah Silverman, and Liam Neeson. Yeah, that's right, Liam Neeson in a comedy. In this film, Seth MacFarlane plays Albert, a sheeper living in Arizona in the year 1882. He's wimpy, he's cowardless, he doesn't know how to fight, and one day Charlie's Farron appears in town and helps him regain his confidence, basically his bravery, and we get a hilarious comedy that I just fucking loved. I loved this movie, and I'm so pleased to tell you that for those of you who are really excited to see this movie, this movie was not a disappointment, for me at least. I love Seth MacFarlane, I love his humor. I love Family Guy. I don't really care for the newer episodes that much. I loved Ted. I loved it when Seth MacFarlane hosted the Oscars last year. And this movie, he makes another great comedy. And his acting in this movie, he was actually really, really good in the lead role. I was very impressed. There are so many lines that he says that are just hilarious. Charlie's Farron, that woman is beautiful as... F oh my god, I love that woman. I never saw a young adult. So, I don't know how good she is in comedy. Here, she was really good. And I'm very impressed with her comedic chops. And I can't wait to see her in more comedies. Giovanni Ribisi, Sarah Silverman, and Neil Patrick Harris all were awesome as well. They all had great moments. Especially Neil Patrick Harris. There is one scene with him that I won't spoil that just made me roll on the floor and laugh. That's an expression. I didn't actually roll on the floor and laugh. Sarah Silverman and Giovanni Ribisi had great lines together. They were... Uh, they're funny as well. Amanda Seyfried, you know, another beautiful woman. She was good. I don't think she was great. But she had some lines too that were funny and lines about her. And finally, Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson was awesome. He's awesome in this movie. He is a badass, even though this isn't taken. He is such a badass in this movie, and he is awesome as the villain. I loved that character, and I wish there was more of him. He wasn't underused, but I wish there was just more of him in the movie. The pacing, the movie is extremely fast-paced. I felt like this movie went by like that. It went by that quick, and it was only like two hours long. It didn't feel two hours. It felt like an hour and 20 minutes at most. It felt that quick. I'm not even kidding. The comedy, the comedy is great. There's a lot of funny stuff. I laughed at nearly every single joke in this movie. The script by Seth MacFarlane and two other people was great. I really love the script for this movie. The music, I gotta talk about the music. The music is so clever and funny. Is it supposed to be funny? Yes, and it works perfectly. I really love this movie. I love everything about this movie, and this hat's really starting the fucking... Bug me. Seth MacFarlane's direction is great, once again. He proved that Ted, he could be a great director, and here he does it again, and I can't wait to see Ted 2, to see what happens. And also, I know that they say modern day stuff in the in this movie, even though this movie takes place in 1882 to be specific. It works. I don't really care if they used older language or modern language. I don't care. You know why? Because I was laughing. I had a great time with this movie. I really, really did. There are five cameos in this movie. That will just make you laugh your ass off. One in particular. Now, if you looked online and saw that cameo, or if you've seen the trailer, I'm sorry for you. I really am. I really am sorry. You all know what cameo I'm talking about. For those who are watching and seen the movie, that cameo was one of the funniest scenes in the whole movie, one of the best scenes in the movie. And then, at the end of the movie, in the very last scene, I'm not going to say who it is, there was one awesome-ass cameo that had the fear roaring with applause, including myself. Because the guy that appeared was awesome. I don't really have any problems with the movie. My only problems with the movie are that there were, like, five jokes that didn't work. I mean, there were funny jokes, but they weren't, like, hysterical like most of the jokes were. So, overall, A Million Ways to Die in the West is a great comedy. Is it better than Neighbors? Yes. Is it better than Ted? I don't know. I really don't know, honestly. I love both of them. I love both Ted and this. Could this be the best comedy of the summer? Now, that I do not know. I really liked Neighbors. I can't wait for 22 Jump Street. And I'm hoping that this movie gets a lot of praise like Ted did. So, I'm going to give this film an A. I really, really enjoyed it. And I highly recommend it for you guys. Is it my favorite film of the year so far? 
no. Well, actually, I really don't know. But anyways, you guys are going to enjoy this. Let's hope you're not disappointed. So, guys, if you see Million Ways to Die in the West, tell me down below. What did you think about it? Thanks for watching my early review of Million Ways to Die in the West. Stay tuned for more reviews on the channel. I will have a review for X-Men Days of Future Past up this weekend. I'm so excited to see it. Oh, it's going to be amazing, hopefully, to me at least. Thank you all for watching my review, and see you soon.